turn your Bibles to Psalm 91, the verse number 1 and 2. Psalm 91, the verse number 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress, my God in him, will I trust. I will take it again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him. In Him will I trust. I want to teach you on a subject of entitled The Hiding Place. Look at somebody and tell the person the hiding place. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. I want you to give me your undivided attention as I take you on this journey. I'm going to be teaching you. So I'm going to take my time to expound on the scripture that we just, we, we just read. And so... I want you to give me your rapt attention. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted for whatever reason. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your word go forth with power. But in simplicity, let it go forth in power. Let it have effect. Let your word transform. Let your word heal. Let your word revive. Let your word encourage somebody. Let your word rebuke. Let your word correct. I declare in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I submit to you absolutely. I ask you to use me as a vessel of honor to be a blessing to the people of God. And Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will let me speak as the mouthpiece of the Almighty God. And Holy Spirit, expound on Psalm 91, the verse number 1 and 2 to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Somebody say again, hiding place. Hiding place. Say hiding place. Now, I have talked about um, the book of Psalms and I've made you to understand that the totality and the composition of Psalms wasn't completely authored by David. David didn't write, write all the Psalms. There are different people that contribute to the authorship of the book of Psalms. Now, theologians believe that David wrote 70 collection of the Psalms. There are other contributors. There are other people that wrote the book of Psalms like Solomon, the sons of Korah, also wrote some of the collection of, Psalm, of uh, the Psalms. Heathen wrote some of the Psalms. And so, there are different, 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 different uh, authors that wrote the book of Psalms. But when it comes to Psalm 90 and Psalm 91, Psalm 90 and Psalm 91, it was Moses that wrote it. Moses. It was Moses that wrote Psalm 90 and Psalm 91. Moses was the author 
of Psalm 90 and Psalm 91. Now, Moses wrote Psalm 91 during their exodus into the promised land in the wilderness. In fact, from the beginning of their departure from Egypt into the promised land, that was when uh, Moses wrote that particular psalm, Psalm 91, to comfort the church in the wilderness, to encourage the church in the wilderness, to inspire the church in the wilderness as the church goes through the wilderness, heading towards their promised land. And so the book, Psalm 91, was written by Moses the prophet. Moses the prophet. So the first verse, let's look at it, project it for me. He that dwelleth in the secret place, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth, the dwelleth there, when you look at it in the Hebrew, is Yashab. Yashab simply means to abode, to abode, to abode, or to abide. Yashab also means habitation. Yashab also means to sit there. Yashab also means to stay there. And so, when the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place, what actually Moses was saying is this. He that maketh the secret place of the most high God, his habitation. His habitation. His abode. His dwelling place. His sitting place. Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Now you have to take note that he said he that dwelleth he that dwelleth speaking to the individual this is not corporate this is individual he said he is not plural it's singular and so Moses was speaking to the individual. Moses was speaking to individuals that for you to abide under the shadow of the almighty God, you must dwell in his secret place as an individual. How do you dwell in the secret place of the almighty God? How do you make the secret place of the almighty God your habitation? Habitation simply means that is where you live. You live there. That is your abode. That is your domicile. You sleep there. You sit there. You remain there. Nothing moves you out of there. Yasha. Nothing takes you out of that dwelling place. That dwelling place is the presence of God. The presence of God must become our habitation. The presence of God must become our dwelling place. The presence of God must become the place of our abode, the place where we live, the place where we stay, the place where we remain. And the Bible is saying that as long as we remain there, as long as we stay there, and as long as we sit there, as long as we make that place our homestead, as long as we make that place our habitation, then we come under the covering of the almighty God. Which means that if you don't inhabit the dwelling place, you are not under the covering of the almighty God. What keeps you under the covering is his presence. 
And how do you inhabit his presence? How do you dwell in his presence? How do you stay and sit in his presence? How do you abide in his presence? How do you live in his presence? You live and stay in his presence through the medium of prayer. It is prayer that brings you to the presence of God. It is prayer that makes you abide in the presence of God. And what Moses was talking about, it is not one time thing. It is a lifetime thing. It must become your lifestyle. Dwelling and abiding in his presence. He that dwelleth, he that dwelleth, he that dwelleth, he that stays in his presence, he that sits at his feet, shall abide. He that sits, stays in his presence, shall abide. Abide simply means coming into him. What brings you into him is his presence. You stay in there. It means that to dwell simply means you have to be consistent in prayer. Consistent. You must also be persistent in prayer. You must also persevere in prayer. And you must also become a prayer addict. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. We are living in a time and in a day where we lack people that dwelleth in the secret place. That is why when it is prayer meeting, you won't see anybody. And so, there are so many people that desire to come to the secret place. But few people truly dwells in the secret place. Because you see, when it comes to abiding and staying and dwelling in the presence of the almighty God, it is discipline and hard work. Prayer is not cheap. Prayer is not easy. You must discipline yourself. You must purpose and determine in your heart. It is a conscious effort. The Holy Spirit will not move you. You must move. <laughs> you don't understand. The fact that you desire to pray doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit will push you to pray. You must get up to pray. And so, it's a conscious effort. It is a deliberate effort to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. And I want you to understand, tonight I will be speaking to you concerning some mysteries and personal experiences and encounters that I have had in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. It is in the secret place that the Lord speaks to you. It is in the secret place that the Lord makes you encounter the supernatural. It is the secret place that the Lord unravels things to you. It is in the secret place that the veil is removed and you are able to see clearly. It is in the secret place that the presence of God in your life increases. It is in the secret place that the power of God comes upon you. It is the secret place that the supernatural meets your natural. It is in the secret place that you are empowered. It is in the secret place that you are immune with divine capabilities and with supernatural energy. It is in the secret place. It is in the secret place that God begins to speak to 
you concerning your destiny, concerning your future, concerning your ministry, concerning your purpose and the essence of your existence. It is in the secret place. It is in the secret place that God reveals to you the works and the activities of the enemy concerning your life, concerning your destiny, concerning your family, concerning your career, and concerning everything that concerns you. It happens in the secret place. Every supernatural encounter that I have had and everything that God has spoken through his spirit to me that have revolutionized my work with Christ, it happened in the secret place. Which means that if I weren't in the secret place, those things wouldn't have happened. Prayer must become a lifestyle. If we are going to be carriers of the presence of God, and if we are going to abide in him, you see, project the scripture. I want to show you something that you need to get. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide. Which means that you come under. Abide means you come under. And so when people look at you, they don't see you, but they see Christ. Because you have come under him. He has become your covering. And so when people are looking at you, they don't actually see you. They only see Christ. Why? Because you dwell in his secret place. His presence overshadows you. His presence overwhelms you. His presence engulfs you. His presence becomes like a mantle that comes upon you. His presence becomes like a garment that you wear. And so when people look at you, instead of seeing you, they see him. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. It has been in the secret place where God will speak to me concerning something that is about to happen. God will speak to me concerning an individual in the church. God will speak to me concerning a plot. I remember one time I came to church to pray. There was nobody in church. I came to just seek the face of the Lord. And whilst I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said, enemy at the gate. Enemy at the gate. And he kept on telling me, enemy at the gate. Enemy at the gate. I said to myself, enemy at the gate. Enemy at the gate. What is the Lord trying to tell me? And he kept on telling me, enemy at the gate. Enemy at the gate. So I continued in prayer. And I said, God, what are you telling me? What do you mean by enemy at the gate? And the Lord started speaking to me. When I was in his presence, he that dwelleth, he that abided, he that inhabited, he that seated, he that stays and remain in his presence. I was there. And he said, there is an enemy that is standing at the entrance of the church. Enemy at the gate. Now, the first thing that came into my mind, I thought that there was some sort of principality that has been assigned that was standing at the entrance of the door. But whilst I was praying, the Lord told me that, no, it is not a principality that has been assigned that is standing at the door, but there is somebody in church that have become an enemy at the gate that is Stopping people from coming in. And those that are coming in, getting them out. Enemy at the gate. And told me specifically who the person was. But I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't in a secret place. Because it is in a secret place that the natural come and come to an encounter with the supernatural. It is the secret place that divinity meets humanity. The secret place. God can 
cannot use you and God cannot unfold and reveal mysteries to you if you don't dwell in his secret place. When you dwell in the secret place of the most high God, let me tell you, there is nothing that can be hidden from you. There is nothing that will take you by surprise. I will not lie to you before God whom I stand speaking and before you. Most of the things that have happened, it didn't take me by surprise. I knew it. Nothing, nothing has taken me by surprise that I was in awe. I was astonished. Hey, this thing. No, nothing. Because the Lord will speak to me concerning it. The Lord will show me. Why? Because I dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Sometimes I will be coming to service before I will come to the service. The Lord was, I was, I'm waiting on the Lord. The Lord will show me the service. How many people will be in the service? Who will sit where? Before I come to the service. So when I come to the service, I know exactly what is going to happen in the service. Recently, I was in Fort Lauderdale. I was having a program there. I went with Terry and uh, Minister Lemingo. When, I don't know how many of you watched, but when I entered, before I went to do the service, the Lord showed me the service and showed me a particular individual what she was going to wear, everything that she was going to wear, and showed me where she would sit and the row that she would sit. And the Lord spoke to me concerning that particular individual. So when we were going to the church, I told Minister Lemingo and I told the driver who picked us up and I told Terry that there is somebody that the Lord showed to me. The person will be wearing A, B, C, D. The person will be sitting so, so and so here and the Lord is telling me that that individual will become this. I entered into the church and the lady was sitting exactly where she was sitting with the same dress, everything. I saw the service and everything before it happened. How many of you watch? Okay, so I have witnesses there. The bishop that hosted me before I entered into the service I believe it was the first day. Whilst I was praying in my hotel, an angel of the Lord entered into my hotel and started showing me stuff about the bishop. Detailed stuff that other people don't know. Nobody knows. Before I entered into the service. When I entered into the service, I told him everything. He was in awe. But I knew this from the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth. You see, in the secret place, God unfolds mysteries to you. Mysteries. Mysteries. Each and every one of you, if I want to know you and know the real you and who you are and where you are headed, all I need to do is to lift up your name in the secret place. Believe you me, I will know everything in and out about you. And there are some of you under the sound of my voice. I know you more than you know yourself. I may not talk much because I lift you up in prayer when I'm in the secret place. And so the Lord speaks to me concerning things that are happening in your life. And what he is about to do. And sometimes he unfolds things to me that have happened in the past. Because for you to deal with a situation permanently, you must go to the roots, the foundation. The secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. In the secret place, you receive strength. In the secret 
place, you receive power. In the secret place, you receive authority. In the secret place, you receive an empowerment. That is why there are some of us, it doesn't matter what kind of storm that comes our way, you will see us in the midst of the storm, cool, calm, and collected. Why? Because our source of strength doesn't come from books. Our source of strength doesn't come from man. Our source of strength doesn't come from our intellectual capabilities and our logical powers. Our source of strength comes from the dwelling place. The dwelling place. God is looking for people that will stay in his presence. That will abide and remain in his presence. True prayer is an eater of time. True prayer, it is an eater of time. Not you going to his presence and you are in the haze to get out. Sometimes the fellowship is so beautiful, it's so sweet, it's so precious that you just want to remain there. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Stop dwelling in the presence of men and dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Stop talking to men and talk to the Almighty God in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth, he that abideth, he that remaineth, sitteth. He that fellowships with God and have intercourse with God and have intimacy with God through the medium of prayer. God unfold mysteries to them. You see, the only reason why sometimes you are so discouraged and you are so despotent and you are so you are so down and your spirit is down is because you have not yet stayed in his presence. <laughs> you cannot stay and dwell in his presence and be anxious for your future. It's not possible. And be worried and have uncertainty concerning your future. Beloved, let me tell you, as I am standing here, I, I know beyond every reasonable doubt, I don't need any prophet or prophetess or bishop or archbishop or pope or cardinal to come and tell me that my future is secured. Because the Lord has already told me in his secret place that my future is secured. So it doesn't matter what kind of attacks and what kind of onslaughts that comes up against me. I know that it is just a distraction. My future is secured. I know that it is just temporary. My future is secured. Why? Because when I dwell and I stayed in the secret place, the Most High told me that my future is secured in Him. And so there is nothing that moves me. There is nothing that shakes me. There is nothing that intimidates me. There is absolutely nothing from the camp of the enemy and from the kingdom of Satan that overwhelms me. The only thing that overwhelms me is the presence of God. The presence of God. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. You see, the reason why a lot of people don't like abiding and dwelling in the secret place, because in the secret place, God begins to examine you. He examines you in the secret place. Because you cannot live in sin and stay in the secret place. When you come to the secret place in sin, he will make sure that that sin is purged. That sin is removed. He, he begins to rebuke you. He begins to re, re, reprimand you. He castigates you. He chastises you for that sin, for that iniquity, for that transgression. That is where you come to him with a heart of repentance. No wonder David said, he that cometh to the Lord with a contrite spirit 
he will not despise. He will not despise. And there are so many people that they don't want God to check them out. They don't want God to reprimand them and to rebuke them of the besetting sins. And so they fail to inhabit his presence. But when you dwell in his presence, he will tell you, those lies, those little, little lies, stop it. He will tell you, those little, little fabrications, stop it. He will tell you, those gossips, stop it. He will tell you, that wetliness, that wetly song, and, and those things that you watch, that did, doesn't add to your life, but take out of your life. He will rebuke you. He will stop you. He will repent remind you. He will castigate you. He will tell you, stop watching it. But because some of us, we love it. We cherish it. It has become besetting in our lives. We cannot do without them. And we are afraid that when we stay in his presence, God is going to talk to us about it. And so we don't stay. We don't stay. Yeah. You know when you stay in his presence, he's going to tell you, stop fornicating. Stop sleeping around. He's going to tell you straight. Stop fornicating. Stop committing adultery. Stop sleeping around. He's going to talk to you about it. <laughs> you know when you dwell in his prayer, he's going to talk to you about the jealousy. He's going to talk to you about the bitterness, the unforgiveness. <laughs> he's going to talk to you about the hate. <laughs> he's going to talk to you about the wetliness. The prayerlessness is going to talk to you about it. That is why so many people don't want to dwell. They don't want to make his secret place their habitation. They don't want to make his secret place their abode, their domicile, their homestead. Because they don't want to deal with certain things and issues that are going on in their lives. Listen to me. If you dwell in the secret place of the most high God, the first thing that you will hate with passion is sin. Sin. <laughs> sin. Is sin. You are afraid to sin because of the fear of God. And because you don't want to lose his presence. You stay away from anything that contradicts his word. When you dwell in his presence and stay in his presence. You know, sometimes my wife will do something that will annoy me. And I will say, I'm going to teach her a lesson. I will say in my mind, because usually I won't talk. I will just keep quiet. I will just say in my mind, I'm going to teach her a lesson. Before I say I'm going to teach her a lesson, the Holy Spirit is saying that you cannot. I have commissioned you to love her unconditionally. And guess what? I say, yes, sir. It doesn't matter how angry and mad I am. I have to let it go immediately. Why? Because I don't want to lose his presence. I don't want to lose it. I don't know about you. Maybe probably herself. Maybe she doesn't tell me. But probably, maybe I may be doing something that annoys her. And she want to act in contradiction to the word. And the spirit of God will tell her, you can't do it because when you do it, you have gotten out of my will. All these things happen because you abide in her presence. And believe you me, immediately when the Holy Spirit, especially when it comes to my wife, and the Holy Spirit speak to me and tell me that, hey, you can't do that. I'm telling you, right Right there, my love increases 
for her. It's just the truth I'm telling you. It just, it just increases. It multiplies. It doubles. I will be all over here. We'll be running in the house. He said, oh, you are worrying me. I'm in the kitchen. I said, oh, let me be in the kitchen with you. She will run around the island. I will follow him here. So why are you worrying me? The love just doubled. Why? Because I don't want to lose the presence. The presence is so precious. That is why David will say, take anything from me. Psalm 51. Take, take, take the kingdom. Take the kingship. Take the authority. Take the power. Take the gold. But don't take your presence from me. Don't take it from me. The day you begin to lose the presence of God, that is the end of your life, your purpose, your ministry, your mission, and your assignment. Satan and hell will break loose. And you will not be able to withstand it because the covering is no longer there. What pushes them away is the presence of God that is around you. The glory of God that is around you. That is what pushes them away. He that dwelleth, 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 dwelleth. The dwelleth also there simply means he that liveth. You, you, you literally live in the presence of God through prayer. You live there. You, you, you stay in his presence like a child stays in the presence of his father for nourishment for transformation he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God I will be in the secret place. The Holy Spirit will just start speaking to me concerning something. I don't just get up to start writing books. I never do it. Like I just get up and then, oh, I feel like writing a book concerning it. It always comes to me when I'm in prayer in the secret place. The Lord will just start speaking to me and will tell them, I want you to write a book. Like recently he said, I want you to write a book and I want you to title the book The Omega Anointing. The End Time Anointing. And he started speaking to me concerning the content of the book. And he said, the Omega Anointing is the apostolic and the prophetic anointing coming together. Is the Omega Anointing. Because in this end time, if Christ is going to come back again, there must be a release of the apostolic and the prophetic working together to bring in the harvest. And that is what is going to usher Christ in to take his bride in the secret place. It was in the secret place. The Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to write a book. I've been very busy Sometimes I spend all night writing. It was in the secret place. He said, I want you to write a book. And I want you to title it, Be Careful Who You Marry. And he started speaking to me concerning it. And he said, who you marry can either make your journey short or long. <laughs> who you marry can either make you fulfill your purpose. Or not fulfill your purpose. If you don't know, go and ask something. It was in the secret place that he spoke to me concerning that. I've been writing on these books interchangeably. Listen to me. In the secret place, he reveals mysteries to you. Stay in prayer. Become a prayer addict. Eat and drink prayer. Feast prayer. Let prayer become your buffet. Let it become your breakfast. Let it become your lunch. Let it become your dinner. 
he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Now, abiding under the shadow of the almighty, what it simply means is that you come under the defensive mechanism of God. The shadow of the almighty is his defense. He becomes a defense around you. He becomes a garrison around you. He becomes a barricade around you. He becomes a fence, a wall around you. Why? Because you dwell in his secret place. You stay and you abide and you remain and you live and you inhabit his presence. And so he makes a garrison around you. He makes a barricade around you. He makes a defense around you. Why? So that the enemy will not be able to infiltrate. The enemy will not be able to penetrate. That is what we call edge. Edge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. If I'm, I'm under the shadow of the almighty, if I'm under the canopy of the almighty, if I'm under the pavilion of the almighty, then be rest assured that no weapon that is formed or faction against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. If you dwell under the shadow of the almighty God, when the enemy comes up, against you like a flood. He will raise a standard against that flood. He will raise a standard. What is the standard? His presence in your life will rise up against that flood that want to sweep you off. Dwell in his secret place. In his secret place. He takes away everything that is not of him out of you. Everything that is not of him. The ungodly appetites. The insatiable appetite that doesn't appeal to God. He takes it away. The things that you yearn for and you crave for. That is enmity against God. He takes it away. In his presence. He will take the drive. The drive of you drinking alcohol. He will take the drive of you smoking. He will take the drive of you watching pornography. He will take the drive of you chasing women. He will take the drive of you sleeping around. He will take that drive away. He will remove that appetite. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God. You want to know what your assignment is? Stay in his presence. You want to know what your calling is? Stay in his presence. You want to know what your purpose is? The essence, the reason for which you were born? Stay in his presence. Dwell in the secret place. Nobody can better tell you your purpose and the essence of your existence than your creator. Than your creator. <laughs> when you buy a product and you have a problem with the product, you don't ask the product, how do I solve this problem? You ask the manufacturer of the product. Because the product himself doesn't know how to take care of himself. You ask the manufacturer. <laughs> what you desire to know, if you ask your creator, he will tell you, but you must first abide in his presence. In his presence. In his presence. The reason why today, in our churches, the devil is fooling around. And in our lives, the devil is messing with us. 
Because we refuse to abide in his presence. When they mention your name, hell must go haywire. There should be confusion in the camp of the enemy. When you walk, you must be a fireball rolling. Anything that comes your way and your path becomes a chaff if it is not of God. You cannot dwell in the secret place of the Most High God and be cold or lukewarm. It is not possible. You are always on fire. You are ablaze for God. Charismatic Pentecostals will love anointing. You want anointing, stay in his presence. Anointing doesn't come cheap. <laughs> it doesn't come cheap. If you have an anointing that you didn't pray for, you stole it. For every anointing, you must work for it. <laughs> for every preparation there is an anointing and for every anointing there is a preparation and the preparation abiding and dwelling in his sacred place in his sacred place if not for abiding and dwelling in his secret place beloved I will not lie to you I would have quit ministry long time ago Long, 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 long. I will hang my calling and go and look for something else to do because of the enormous challenges and attacks. Sometimes people you help, they turn against you, speaking against you. Sometimes people can character assassinate you and say things about you that you look at yourself and you say, hey, I don't know myself. I need to rediscover myself. Painful. Hurtful. There are times you are having sleepless nights. It is not easy. But long ago, when I was a teenager, I was in his presence, seeking his face, wanting to know his will for my life. And Christ appeared. And I saw him walking on an untied road and there were so many broken bottles. And whilst he was walking, the bottles were cutting him and I saw blood gushing out. And I was following him and he spoke to me and he said, son, the road that you are about to take, it is an untied road. There are a lot of broken bottles. As you follow me, bottles will cut you. You will have scars. You will bleed. It will be painful. But as long as you follow me, I will reward you and bless you and lift you up. And so, he conscientized me that this road I'm about to embark on, this terrain is not smooth. And so, everything that I have suffered and everything that I have been through and every challenge that the enemy has thrown at me, I already knew it will come. How did I know? In his secret place. I knew that this road is not smooth. They are portals. You can lose your life. You will have scars. You will bleed. Pain hurts. But because he spoke to me already from his secret place, when it comes, it doesn't bother me. I walk through it. I go through it. Because he had already told me what I'm going to face. I wouldn't have known if I didn't stay in his presence. I wouldn't have known. That is why dwelling 
in the secret place is extremely important. Dwelling, staying, abiding. To hear from him. Because oftentimes we speak to him. But we don't allow him to speak to us. Why? Because we are in a haste to get out. We are in a haste to walk out. I told you earlier, true prayer is a eater of time. So when you pray 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you have not started. You have not. In fact, Jesus said, at least if you have not prayed at all, one hour. So he looked at Peter, James, and John, and he said, could you not tarry with me at least an hour? At least. Anything short of that, you are operating below capacity. That is what the scripture says. He that dwelleth, he that abideth under the shadow of the almighty. <laughs> Worshippers, you want to hear songs that you have not heard? Dwell in his presence. You will hear music that you have not heard. The reason why today in the body of Christ and in the church, all we are seeing and what we are hearing is entertainment is because people don't dwell in his presence. And so we are hearing entertainment. People are showcasing their voices. The range of their voices. Their skill. How they could hold their notes. Their ad lips. And people scream and they shout. But no transformation. No healing. No change of life. Nothing happens to them. They come in worse. And they leave worse. But when you abide in his presence, you may not have the voice. You may not have the ad lips. You may not be able to hold the notes. You may not have the range. But when you begin to worship, you bring down the presence of God. Why? Because you are a carrier of the presence of God. Because you have abided in the secret place of the Most High God. The reason why today in the church, all preachers have become motivational speakers. Because it's easy to be a motivational speaker, but it is hard to be a preacher. <laughs> because to preach, you must hear from God. How do you hear? You must stay in his presence, in the dwelling place. To be a motivational speaker, you just quote some golden nuggets and expound on the golden nuggets and makes people feel good. That is why in the church today, there are so many people that preach people happy. No transformation, nothing. Because nobody wants to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Ministries are dying because nobody wants to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Greatness has been buried because nobody wants to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Satan is scattering and destroying Christian marriages because nobody wants to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You don't abide under the shadow of your friend. 
You don't abide under the shadow of your parents, of your colleague, of your boss, of your manager, of your supervisor. You abide under the shadow of the almighty God. The God of eternity past and the God of the eternity for the future. You abide under his shadow. No power can touch you. No demon can touch you. No satanist, no occultist can touch you. No guess words can circumvent your destiny. No spirit can stop you when you abide under his shadow. <laughs> when you dwell under his shadow, it is not only believers that see the glory. Even Satan himself sees the glory. One day, I was in Lagos to preach and it was the last day of the program. And usually when I travel, I want to buy something for my sweetheart. I don't know about you, but this woman, I don't play with her. I love this woman. In fact, God has to allow me to marry her in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> I asked the driver... Because I wasn't having any naira on me. So I asked the driver to take me to a place where I can change some dollars to um, buy something for her. So he took me to the, uh, to the Lagos airport. So I came out of the car and there were some, the black market. So they were there. And then this Muslim that we went to, he said, oh, this guy has been changing money from this guy. And I was, you know, casually dressed. I was wearing my jeans and with my uh, um, shirt, T-shirt, and with my hat and with my dark shades. You know, you will not know that this guy is a preacher. There is no way you will know. So I went to this guy to change money. This guy is a Muslim. In fact, he's called Alaji. The man, first time we just met, the man looked at me and the man said, young man, the glory of God is so strong upon you. And you will be very great. You have a very bright future, young man. You have a very bright future. The glory of God is, is, is mighty on you. You will be very great. You have Alati, a Muslim. I won't lie to you. I, I froze. I froze. Not because of what he said, but because of who is saying it to me. If it were to be a believer, I would not freeze. I would not be amazed. Because I know that the same spirit that is in me is the same spirit that is in him. The spirit bear witness. But this man, we have nothing in common. So the driver who took me just then and was looking at me and look at the allergy. We couldn't say a word. I just changed my money and carried my money. Listen to me. When you dwell in the presence of the Most High God, let me tell you, when Satan, when demons, when forces of darkness, when they come, they know those who abide in the presence and they know those who don't. <laughs> they know those who abide and those who don't. Because when they see those who abide, they see the glory. They see the power. They see the presence. And those who don't abide, they don't carry that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. 
you can never be too busy that you can pray. You can never be too busy. Have you ever been too busy that you didn't eat? You will always make time to eat. Who doesn't make time to eat? It doesn't matter how busy you are. You will find time to eat. You will find time to drink. Why can't you find time to stay in his presence? That is why when I see people who don't come to church, they say, ah, Pastor, I've been so busy. <laughs> Usually I don't say anything. But it just tells me their level of maturity in God. And it tells me where they are in Christ. Project the scripture for me. The verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Do you realize that you can say that he is your refuge and your fortress until you abide? Because if you don't abide, he can be your refuge and your fortress. It's not possible. Until you abide, he is not your refuge and your fortress. The refuge and the fortress simply means that he is your protector. He is your defense. He is your security. When you are in him, you are untouchable. He is, I would say, he is my refuge and my fortress. My refuge and my fortress. The fortress there simply means he is my stronghold. Stronghold. He is my stronghold. It's a no-go area of the enemy. It's a no-go area of the forces of darkness. It's a no-go area of the powers of darkness. It's a no-go area. Because he is my refuge and my fortress. My security is in him. My preservation is in him. He is my defense. My defense. My defense. I remember when we were young and in middle school, because my younger brother and I attended the same uh, middle school, he will go and cause trouble, and they will be running after him. And when they are running after him, what he is looking for is me. And then when he finds me, guess what he does? He will run behind me and start teasing the person that is following. And be saying to the person, you think you can touch me? Come and touch me. The only reason why he has gotten mouth to speak back is because he is behind me. Why? Because he knows I will not allow anybody to touch him. Nobody. And I have that reputation in the school. If you touch my brother, trouble for you. When the Lord is your refuge, you are behind him. You can tease the devil. Bring all your weaponry from your arsenals. You can't touch me. Shoot your best arrows. Gather your satanic archers. Let them shoot their arrows. It will not come near my dwelling. Because the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. When the Lord is your refuge and your fortress, you are not afraid of anything. 
You don't fear men, you don't fear spirits. When the Lord is your refuge and your fortress. Every day, you walk with your head up and your shoulders high because you know who is ahead of you and who you are following. You are untouchable. Nobody can mess with you because he is your refuge and your fortress. Let them make the enchantment. Let them erect their satanic altars. Let them make satanic covenants against your life and against your destiny and against your marriage and everything that concerns you. Because the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. It will not come near my dwelling. Before it could come, it must pass through him. And it can pass through him. And because it can pass through him, it cannot touch me. I am untouchable. When the Lord is your refuge and your fortress, you become invisible in the eye of the devil. They can't find you. They can't see you. A pastor friend of mine uh, 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 in New Jersey traveled to her homeland. And Am Roberts realized that somebody has come from the States with money because that's what they usually think. So, she was sitting down in the living room with her two sisters. They were watching TV. Am Roberts just entered, broke the door and entered with their guns. And they started asking the two sisters, where is their sister? And their sister was sitting in the couch watching the TV. And the armed robbers couldn't see her. They scattered everything. And she was sitting down in the couch with the remote watching TV. They couldn't find her. They searched everywhere. They couldn't find anything. When they were leaving, they slapped the sisters. I said, next time, tell your sister to stay at home. They were, the woman was sitting in the couch. Pastor Washington. When you abide in his presence, you become invisible to the eye of the enemy. That is why I say stuff. Maybe you don't understand. I cannot be in any flight that the flight will not land. It's not possible. Everybody in the fl flight can be satanist, but because I am in that flight, the flight must land. It's not possible. <laughs> if the flight will not arrive I will not be in that flight it's not possible, I will miss it even when I'm there on time I will have a runny stomach by the time I go to the bathroom and come back, the flight is gone it's not possible he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty he will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress. When the Lord is your refuge and your fortress, nobody can touch your family. They cannot. They are even afraid. They, they will not dare touch your family. They, they will not dare touch you, touch your health. They will not dare touch your finances. They will not dare touch your career, touch your education, touch your children, or touch anything that concerns you. Because they know touching it is trouble for them. I will say he is my refuge and my fortress. Refuge and my fortress. One day I was in a flight going to Nigeria. I was sitting down. A woman, I didn't even know the woman, but the woman just said, ah, Pastor Grant, you are in this flight. I know that this flight will arrive safely. Everybody knew that I was a pastor because the way she screamed, Pastor Grant, you are in this flight. I know that this flight will arrive safely. Everybody started looking at me. And, but, and what she was saying is true. I cannot be in any flight that will not arrive. Because anywhere I go, I carry the glory, the presence.
presence, the power of God with me. Because I have learned that the only way to carry his presence and to carry his glory and to carry his power is to abide, to dwell in the secret place. To live there, to remain there, to stay there in the secret place. The secret place. God is calling you to the secret place. God is calling you to the secret place. You see, recently the, the, the Lord of force and mysteries to me in his secret place. Do you know that when you stay in his secret place and abide and dwell in his secret place, pretenders cannot be around you. Pretty soon you will know they are true colors. <laughs> Oh, it's just a you, you will know like that. It doesn't matter how hard they try to hide it. Their true identity will come out. Because as long as they hang around you, the presence of God around you will expose their true character. Their true identity. And the cover agent cannot be in your life without knowing it. The presence will expose them. That is why, as a believer, prayer must be a lifestyle. It must be a lifestyle. Staying in his presence must be a lifestyle. Meditation in his presence must be a lifestyle. Hearing from him must be a lifestyle. Talking to him must be a life. Star. Having intimacy and intercourse with him must be a lifestyle. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He shall say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Now watch this. My God in him, my God, in him, will I trust, my God, in him, will I trust. Do you see that? My God, he personalized it. Because this is not a group thing. This is not a corporate thing. This is an individual thing, individual commitment. My God, my God, in him, not in man, not in my degree, not in who I know, not in people in high authority, not in people with money, with connections. My God, in him will I trust. In other words, this God that he's talking about, he trusts him even to his head. His confidence is not in any man. His trust is not in any man. His trust is not in things. His trust is not in the elements. His trust is not in materialistic things or physical things. His trust is in him. The question here is this. Is your trust in God? Is your trust in God? Is your trust in God? There are some of you, you say your trust in God, but you know that your trust is not really in God. Your trust is in the connection. Your trust is in, is in that man, is in that woman. You see, when your trust is in God, 
the things God does for you is mind-boggling. Mind-blowing. I wish I would have liberty to give you some testimonies. It's mind-boggling. Mind-blowing. I have come to a place in God that I don't get worried about anything. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I wish I'm worried about something that I could tell you. But when your trust is in him, and your trust in him is absolute, you are not worried, you are not anxious about anything. Sometimes, myself and my family, we will, we will, we will face adverse situations. Serious, heavy ones. And I will tell first lady, don't worry, everything will be fine. Casually like that. You know why? Because I know whom I have put my trust. My trust is in him. My trust is in him. When your trust is in him, he makes provision. When your trust is in him, he makes a way. When your trust is in him, he opens the door. When your trust is in him, he gives you the breakthrough. When your trust is in him, he settles the controversy. When your trust is in him, he vindicates you. When your trust is in him, he speaks for you. When your trust is in him, he defends you. When your trust is in him, he becomes your attorney. When your trust is in him. When your trust is in him, that is when you can boldly say, this battle is not mine. This battle is his. When your trust is in him. When your trust is in him. You must come to the place where you trust him and him alone. You trust him and him alone. You depend on him and him alone. You give yourself to him and him alone. That is the place you need to come to. And I'm telling you, there is fulfillment when you come to that place. You walk with joy. When, when, when around you there are turbulence, but in the midst of the turbulence, in the midst of the disaster, in the midst of the catastrophe, you are laughing and you are smiling. Because your trust is not within yourself. Your trust is in him, the almighty God. The Bible says he dwelleth in the heavens. Heavens. Where you think that God is, God is not there. <laughs> you think that he's in heaven. God is not there. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Where was he when he created heaven and earth? Where he was when he created heaven and earth, that is where he is. He is above and beyond the heavens. My trust is in him. When trouble comes, my trust is in him. When disappointment comes, my trust is in him. When I'm being falsely accused, my trust is in him. When everybody disdain and despise and rejects me, my trust is in him. Why? Because he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In him will I trust. What do you trust? No wonder the scripture says others trust in chariots and others also trust in horses. But as for us, we trust in the name of the Lord. 
And David said to Goliath, you come to me with spears and with sword and with shield. Because those are the things that you trust. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Where is your trust? Where is your confidence? And you know why Moses was saying, in him will I trust. Because it is in the abiding that makes you put your absolute trust in him. Because when you abide and dwell in his presence, you realize that you have no power of your own. No abilities of your own. <laughs> no connection, no strategies of your own. You depend and rely on him. God is calling us to the hiding place. He is calling us to the secret place. To direct, to guide, to lead. To unravel, to unfold mysteries to us that will take us to the next level, next dimension in Him. Rise on your feet. Listen to me. This God that we serve, he wants to do more than we asked of him. Believe me, he wants to do more than we asked of him. More than we asked of him. There is a place you come in God when you have abide in his presence. There are some things you just whisper to him and he just makes it happen. He just makes it happen. For the past two weeks or three weeks or so, there is something I've been battling with and I'm like, man, how am I going to do this? And this morning, I just, I was going out and actually this afternoon and I just whispered to him, Concerning it. Just like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I said, God, you need to take care of this thing. For me. My goodness. Within 30 minutes, after whispering, it was taken care of. And Every day I am in awe of God. Listen, when you abide in his presence, this scripture will come alive to you. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all you could ever ask nor think. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all. You could ever ask or think. If you will stay in his presence. If you will dwell in his presence. 
You know, things like this, it humbles you. You cannot be arrogant. You cannot be proud. You cannot be cocky. You cannot be looking down at that people. You cannot be selective. It humbles you. It humbles you. It humbles you. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Where do you want to dwell? Where do you want to stay? Where do you want to live? In the world that we are, where there are a lot of Satanists, I believe it was today or yesterday where somebody sent me a, 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 an interview or something. You know, they were interviewing Jay Z, and and, the, and 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 he said that he said that Satan is 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 the true God. Jesus is fake. And do you know how many millions follows this Satanist? Do you know how many millions? Go and check his Twitter account. Go and check his Facebook account. Go and check him out on YouTube. Do you know how many people listen and buy his songs. Beyonce's husband. There are some of you, you play his song in your car. When pastor is not there, you are jamming in your car. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you are not hungry for God. You are not. You are not hungry for God. <laughs> Sometimes my wife will mention somebody who is a, you know, a secular artist. I say, who is that? Who is that? You know, and she feels that I should know the person. But to tell you the truth, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, and this is the gospel fact, and the Holy Spirit is my witness, I only listened to gospel songs. When I was growing up, gospel songs or preaching tapes, that was all I was listening to. So, I don't know these people. And I don't want to know them. In any form or shape, I care less. I don't want to know any of them. I really thank God. <laughs> I thank God. So as I'm here, I don't have any appetite. I don't miss club. I've never been to the club before, so I don't miss it. It's when you have been there, there where you, you miss it. I don't know the club. I don't know inside. If you ask me how does club, I have no idea. I've never been into one. I have no idea. I have no idea how club looks like, what they do. I have no idea. I only hear. Oh, club, they do this. They do that. Because when you abide in his presence, he takes those appetites. Somebody came to see me. The person was smelling alcohol in my office. Guess what? I wasn't smelling a thing. Why? I don't know how alcohol smells. I have never in my lifetime drunk one. I've not sipped it. So, mm, I've not done it. 
I've not, so I don't know. And the person was smelling. So first lady came to me and said, this, this man is smelling. So don't use I said, no. He said, no, you, I don't blame you. You don't even know this, the smell of alcohol. I, I have no idea. I have no clue. I have no clue. Because when you dwell in his presence, he takes that out. He takes it. I cannot stand cigarette. I'm not smoking it, but I've, not, I've never smoked one before in my lifetime. But when somebody is smoking and I pass, I start having headache, severe headache. The smoke, severe headache. I stay away from anywhere somebody is smoking. I have severe migraines. He that dwelleth, dwelleth. He takes the appetite. I don't walk around and be looking at other women. Hey, I should have had this one. I don't come to church and be checking women. And be checking. And see me in my office. I have special prophecy. The Lord just spoke something to me. See me in my office. Meet me, so, so, and so time. I don't do that. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. When you dwell in a secret place, his fear comes upon you. My personal assistant will tell you, when I'm traveling, he creates a form for me. So they send it to you. And one of the, some of the things that are on the form, no lady visit me. No lady comes to my hotel. I don't meet ladies for special prophecies, special prayers. All oh, is lined up there. When I finish preaching, when I come in, immediately I enter, you introduce me. When I finish preaching and I hand over the microphone, you take me straight to my hotel. Ladies don't drive me to my hotel. <laughs> the bishop recently, where we were, the bishop was, was shocked. When you abide in his presence, his presence becomes precious and valuable. You discipline yourself to protect it. You don't mess around and play around and joke with it. Do you know how many years it has taken me? I will be in the bush, snakes. I'm praying, abiding. Snakes will be walking around me. I forget about the snake. <laughs> Spirits will be coming to attack me. In the woods. I will see dead people on the path to my prayer meetings. I will turn. The dead people, I will turn. They disappear. It doesn't stop me. I pray, do all night, finish, go home. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God. I see people come to me and they said, hey, Pastor, we want to be very close to you right now and talk to you because when God starts giving you that exposure, we will not be able to talk to you. Who told you? Who told you? So suddenly exposure just changed my life. Greatness just rewind my life, reshuffle my life. It's a matter of fact, and I tell these people, the more God lifts me, the more humble I become. I don't need to have bodyguards and have 20 mobile phones. He 
he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know the call of God is upon you. You know God wants to use you. Not necessarily as a ministerial material, but in other areas, your career, your profession, in your family. But because you have not disciplined yourself to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that is why you are marking time. The day you make that decision, you will see a revolution, a transformation, and reformation, and a revival. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God. Lift up your eyes. I don't know what you desire from him. But you know what you desire from him. I don't know what he had told you concerning your life, your calling, your ministry, your career. Why you are here. But you know. Tonight, I want you to talk to him. I want you to speak to him. Tell him to exchange your weakness for his strength. Tell him that you surrender all to him. You surrender your will, your emotions, everything to him. Let him be first in your life. Don't let him be last in your life. Tonight, I want you to talk to him. Speak to him. There are some things he wants to tell you. There are some things he wants to speak to you about. Listen, if you had dwelled in his presence, you would have known these things long ago. He would have revealed it to you. He would have unfolded unfold it, unravel it to you, uncover it to you. He would have exposed it to you. Speak to him. He wants to increase his presence and his glory in your life. But until you come to the place of abiding, he cannot. He cannot. He cannot. God help us. Help us, Lord. Mati kibiria susu sakabayas. I hear the Lord saying that tell them. If they get close to me, I will get close to them. He said, tell them, I want them, but do they want me? He said, tell them, 
I have released my blessings, but do they want it? Thank you, Jesus. You are watching me right now, wherever you are, in your living room, me, in your bedroom, in your office, wherever you are watching me around the world. He is calling you to abide in his presence, to stay in his presence. There are new encounters and new dimensions and new levels in his presence. Cause me 
Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.